because we have to rejoin. Ain't no thing. I'm in. Hel now your health check passed with warnings. It's like, oh, you're so oh. dumb, Zencaster. <sighs> All right. Three, two, one. And now it says it's recording. And I see my line moving, which is good news. <laughs> I'll say something. Hey, I'm talking directly into my mic. Nice. Like this. this. Change. That's news. That's <laughs> the way of doing things. Hello. I'm talking yeah. as well. There you go. I see your little squiggle. Hey. I'm <laughs> so sorry, no. Eric. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I forgot I was. <laughs> I forgot I was live. <laughs> you forgot you were live. Uh, on Twitch, so <laughs> Mr. Time Leak is like loud. Oh. Right, let me blast you guys while I'm walking. I just discovered that I can straight up tweet that we're live from the actual uh, uh, OBS thing. Yes, that sounds like an integration that exists. Yeah, I, I never never saw that before. Never noticed it, I guess I should say. Oh, tag nabbit one password. No. Last pass, whatever I use for this. Why must you? Eric, I'm a professional streamer, okay? <laughs> I'm a professional streamer. <laughs> Don't question my mistakes, just embrace Are them. Are you doing that on OBS? Yeah. You gotta show me how you did that at the end. How did, how I did what? Uh... The that because I normally crop it like the you know the the not fun way where you actually put in the numbers. Oh, I'm holding down Alt. Ooh, okay, I gotta try that. Mm -hmm. Not now, but so you know later. I only see so Cole, you're overlapping your uh, lower third as they call it. Mm-hmm. And I don't see me or outer yep. orange. That's because I have to do them yeah. one at a time. I bet my mom's already watching. Oh, like, that's so cute. Down her complaint sheet. <laughs> all the errors and stuff that we're doing wrong. So the reason I have to do them one at a time is because, uh, and I had to, I had to wait until Alan showed up because if I size them all, like this, when he comes in, it changes all of the, the the window sizes. So then they don't actually fit, and I have to resize them. Oh, I see our usual troll who got banned from Twitch has made a new account so he can continue to troll. Trevor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, there's your... Here's your stuff. You're so smooth at editing those. Yeah, practices. I've had too much practice. All right. Now you have to change Alan's lower third to Crouton less. Oh, you're right, you're right. God. <laughs> the Croutons. Here we go. That's me. There I go. Bye bye, me. I've been doing so much. I know, but you know what? You can't watch. You have to, like, take the Discord video. What I do is to pop out the Discord video and put it over the Twitch video portion. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to watch uh, the Discord, I mean, the Twitch, the time delay, it's so oh, yeah. distracting. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'll be, I'll be over here. I was just looking at the cropping. <laughs> I'll be looking this way. See? Because, yeah, the delay is, like, a two-second delay, so... Told you, Eric. I'm a professional over here. <laughs> here we go. Hello, Mellow and Matt. Thank you for the follow as well. Appreciate it. And then, uh, small Pepe Power <laughs> as well. Hey, thanks, Ed, for the the resub for nine months. Jeez, that is awesome. I greatly appreciate it. We're we're about ready to go. About ready to go. I think. Uh, Alan, I. If he is not asleep or if he's not too busy, we'll just have him jump in and then we'll go from there. I th no, probably not, actually, because we'd have to restart Zencaster now that I'm thinking about it. Oh. Unless, unless actually, if he can record his local. His local. Yeah. Yeah, then, then you can do it. Yeah, then, we can, then I can do it. I could splice him in there. Um, 
So that's. Oh, I'm going to start my own local recording just as a backup. All right, I'm not going to touch mine because I got too much going record on. Record both sides of the conversation. All right, and then. Oh God, that new layout looks okay, but Twitch making it look like a little. It. Maybe it's just my resolution that I have Twitch up as because. You got real quiet, Cole. Maybe it's just my resolution that I have Twitch up as. There you go. <laughs> I this is like my my problem. I don't like to sit here and have the mic in my mouth. But you're a professional. Uh, I told you I'm a fresh <laughs> professional. You're professional. <laughs> well, so you could do what I do. I have it like to the side. Yeah. If you, if you could orient your arm so it's over to the side, you should be okay. So it's not directly in front of you. Like that. Yeah. And I don't sound yeah. weird. No, you no, actually you sound, sound okay. But I mean, you, you, I mean, you should aim to have your lips brushing the uh, spongy part. So if you can get the it close spongy. to the side of your mouth. We don't. Part. We don't use pee filters here. Please. Yeah, I'm the only one with the filter. I have two in my <laughs> up there, but. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shoot! You're right. Thank you for reminding me, uh, Crow Raptor. I need to change. I need to change that to Kuton. This is the problem with moving my arm. It now, Less. for whatever reason, <sighs> wants to levitate. Yeah. What similar ones I mean. What? Must they all look the same? Did you get you it from Amazon? From Amazon? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the road? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Best reviewed arm. I don't, I don't know. That. It's just something in when I move. It moves. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I've had the same problem. It just like goes up. Which is fine when I'm actually doing my job and I want it to be out of the way. Mm -hmm. But not so great when I'm trying to record professional sounding audio. Oh, oh, oh. We all moved. Yeah. I have. I clicked okay. a button. I have the document in front of me. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, can you send uh, the document link? I'll, in I'll the link thing? the document in Thank the Discord. You. And then I need to add something to it now that I'm remembering. And Trevor wants me to let everybody know that the pronunciation of his current Twitch screen name is small PP power. <laughs> well, then he should have he should have not named it Pepe. Uh, I don't think that they... It's probably probably was taken. All right, I just posted a link to the document in the uh, in the Discord. Thank you for the Whenever follow, playing, Sojima. Uh, team fight tactics, mm. TFT. Mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. his current passion. Mm. Uh, he starts out every like text chat in the game just writing small PP power. That is a, a true team fight tactics is the way to go. That game is fun. You know, I'm old. And <laughs> back in the 80s, on my Commodore 64, I'm glad this is being recorded. This is a great way to start the program. Back in the 80s, on my Commodore 64, I used to play a game called Archon. Um, and what it was, uh, if you're familiar with Wizard Chess from Harry Potter, it's very similar to that. So it was a chess board. Not necessarily chess pieces, but uh, you would play the game similar to chess, except for when the pieces came to combat, then it would turn into you actually had to fight the other piece. Um, oh. And to me, that was perfection. And I don't, I don't have like any need for anything new. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've also had complaints uh, from. Uh, Trevor, I've already said his name his screen name once that uh, the better you're doing the harder they make it for you to play which <laughs> like skill based that. matchmaking or no so there's uh, I think the simplest way to put it is buffs but I guess they're items that you get to select from to oh. onto your champions yeah, yeah, yeah. You put them on the board and the good buffs appear for the worst players sooner so they have more time to select yeah. them and the better players it's less time it's like We're rubber banding tactics, right yeah 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 it, yeah 
pretty much what they do if you are literally and I, I used to play this game pretty aggressively but pretty much if you're in last place out of eight players what they start doing is they actually will start throwing stuff at you to kind of get you to catch up essentially and they'll usually throw better items at you than they'll throw the new players and the reason why they did that was so that way the gap between the person that's winning and the person that's losing isn't that aggressive and also gives you a chance to kind of come back if you play your pieces right because they'll usually throw items that you may need in order to make your comp like at its like peak performance it's i, I love that game <laughs> i don't play it anymore but i used to be really into it i was i was i only got to gold uh as a competitive player but it was, it was fun <laughs> it, it reminds gold, me of the um gold the... four gold three gold two gold uh, one. i believe i stopped like literally at, like gold four i got okay. in and i just stopped <laughs> yeah i don't like games that require both dexterity and quick decision making and i would just yeah. like i would misclick left and right and it would make me very unhappy yeah it's so uh, uh Cole, pretty much you fight tactics the way it works is you start a board it's like a gridded board mm -hmm. it's you and like, a your quote-unquote opponent like there's another side and pretty much you have like you start with money and you use the money to buy like little people and mm -hmm. then you put those little people on the board and then what happens is that those little people fight whatever's on the other side and sometimes you'll fight minions and sometimes you'll fight other people and then it kind of comes down to every time you don't win a battle you start going down points you start at 100 and you go down and once you hit zero that's it you're out and pretty much you just keep going and going until your comps are like pretty much counterplaying each other and then you're kind of battling it out and as you're doing this you're re-rolling characters and you're using money to get more characters and you, you have to like you have an, you have an ecosystem of mm -hmm. money and then you have like a system of like characters and it's also rng in a way because the dice roll is always random and you kind of use that dice roll to just like accelerate as fast as possible to pretty much beat everyone else out and then you win if you, if you think it's based to the end. on uh league of legends yeah so yeah dota had auto chess and then leak copied them with team fight tactics yeah. i'm sure both of them copied somebody else yeah team auto chess is like the like the main one like the one that it pretty much got copied the from original then, yeah 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 or the, the older one I mean, they are copying Archon, as I said. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true, because Archon's like what started it all. I know a little bit of Archon because I'm a big, I'm actually really big into retro gaming. Uh, so that's kind of my thing. I haven't been recently touching it, but before I got into card fight, like retro games slash current games slash anything gaming related has always been like my go-to. Oh, then you need to find for me because I can't remember the name of it. It was this game where you were a robot and you would go like into a nuclear reactor that was about to melt down and you had to like travel through the different rooms to collect the pieces to stop the meltdown i can never remember what the sounds name of it familiar is. of course it does it's a, it was a commodore 64 game so oh i gotta think it's anyways. always a commodore 64 game <laughs> this is a card fight vanguard podcast is it though? boy <laughs> we've got news <laughs> is it covered this week i don't Cole, think... are you ready to cover some news i don't think anything happened will <laughs> oh, dang. well, the thing that happened was once again, you're f too far from your mic, which is amazing seeing that <laughs> we just did all these adjustments, but uh, a start. what's okay. So here's, we got to start with what, what we've been doing recently. And I, unfortunately, um, so the, the, the saga continues, the saga began when I used to live in DC and DC has this incredibly large, vibrant, live Vanguard community. And I moved to Minnesota and literally as far as I could tell, the Vanguard community in Minnesota had completely died about three days before I moved to Minnesota. But I, with the re reboot and new investigations and everything, I found a new community, uh, but it's really only one card shop uh, south of Minneapolis once a week that really has league or, or they have it a couple of nights a week but unfortunately this is the double sad their V premium night is Tuesdays so I'll never be able to make that unless we change our recording schedule hey but I'm thinking about changing our recording schedule just thinking hey, about that there you go um, <laughs> Saturday is the main overdress day which would be the main day that i'd be interested in playing because i really want to play more overdress i enjoy it quite a bit and this saturday when i woke up i wasn't feeling well and in 2021 if you don't feel good you stay home you don't go to league nope. <laughs> i was nope. like i don't even care if like later in the day you start to feel a little better no i woke up and i was like i've got a headache i feel really run down this could possibly be like flu or something like that so, 
I did spend Saturday over at Trevor's house, and I think I literally spent 10 hours playing Monster Hunter Rise, Pokemon Shield, and Monster Hunter Stories 2. Cole, I made progress in Stories 2. I'm so proud of you. I believe I, I defeated the Basarios. I oh, went into the that's cave. a fun fight. I defeated the Yangaruga. Oh. So... I'm on my way. I'm on, it's, you, I know. I know. Once again, Vanguard podcast. But they are number one. They announced G rank for Monster Hunter Rise. It's coming out next summer. It looks so good. It's vampires. I swear it's going to be vampires. It's so exciting. It's so gothy in Europe and yeah, it fantastic. is. And they keep pumping out so much new content for stories too. It's like every month you're getting new stuff. Yeah. That game's pretty exciting. I want to pick it up, and I've been kind of slacking on oh, it. Oh, dude! If you want, if you want in a Monster Hunter, Cole and I will we will get you where you need. I am hop on. We'll piggyback ride you. Hunter rank like one twenty eight or something. One twenty seven, one twenty eight. I have full Valstrax armor, which means nothing to you, but dang is <laughs> no. I, make, I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> played on the 3DS. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, oh, it just, oh. dude, rise, rise is great, and stories. Yep. Stories I like as much. It's a totally different, different thing, but it's still just as fun. And uh, especially, fun. Yeah, the demo's super good too. So, and then your story progress can transfer over too. So you want to give that a go. It gives you literally everything you need to know in the in the demo. So if you don't like the demo, you don't like the game. We don't have an Alan so far. So far, a guest. Oh yeah. Professional. We are professional. <laughs> uh, we're, we're joined by uh, Outer Orange today. Yeah, hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've Outer talked Orange, to you before. You introduce yourself. Yes, um, so I'm Outer Orange, and I do Vanguard, Card by Vanguard content. Uh, kind of new, so I'm about to hit 1K. We're like 30-ish people away from, from that, so that's pretty exciting. Uh, but yeah, I mainly do uh, like... Deck profile, well, not really deck profiles. I do like research and deck profiles and just Vanguard topics in general. And I like to throw in some like random stuff too that I just like to have fun with with my community and stuff like that. So that's pretty much my main thing. And I really like research and helping people out and getting kind of new people into the game. And that's actually kind of what I got recognized for. Like uh, between some people on Twitter, they started seeing some of my research videos. And they're like, oh my gosh, go check her out. She actually has like some good stuff on there. And that kind of started kind of the, the ball rolling of uh, getting to the 1K. A lot closer than I thought I, I would. I didn't think I was going to hit it for. A long time, but recently the, the the momentum has been really coming out. So yeah, this is awesome. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. For the folks who will get bored because they don't play premium and not listen to the entire episode, where do people find your content? Uh, where do they find it? Um, so you can YouTube me, so Outer Orange, and then I have my Twitter, which is also Outer Orange, but with an underscore, so Outer underscore Orange, and then Twitch, which is also Outer Orange. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much like my main my main three that I'm currently using. So you guys can find me on there. I stream every Tuesday. I record I upload videos Monday through Friday most of the time unless something serious is going on in pers- my personal life. And then uh, what I miss. And then Twitter, I'm on there pretty much twenty four seven. We do memes. We have Zazan that started out as Pikachu. This thing oh, yeah, <laughs> turned into a Zazan. We made this into literally we made this into Zazan. So if you guys this don't know, mm-hmm. there's a blue the version of this guy floating right. around. Um, and yeah, so that's the thing. And Discord, you can find me on Discord too. Um, we have a Discord community and stuff like that. And we do a lot of deck plotting and deck discussions and car discussions, Genshin, everything you can think of, nerdy stuff, cool oh, stuff. Genshin. <laughs> oh, man, I wanted to like that game so much and it was just too much. It's okay. It's okay. As, as a monster uh, hunter player, I can understand. Like, they're kind of both similar games, but, like, mm-hmm. Genshin is kind of its own thing. and But they're kind of similar in terms of, like, you're grinding and doing things. So yeah. I'm not surprised. You kind of have to pick one anyway. Like, if you didn't get into Genshin, you got to Monster Hunter. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's – they're both grindy yeah. games. So but you're not too far literally, off. Uh, my buddy, that, he was like, oh, you got to get into Genshin. We can play together because there's, like, no game that overlaps that he and I ever play together. Mm-hmm. For my birthday, he bought me – Xbox controller that I could Bluetooth onto my iPad to play Genshin so we could play together. <laughs> and like I I tried for like two months and I was like, I can't. There's so much grind in this game and it's so yeah. confusing and <laughs> Yeah. But the character <laughs> design is real nice. 
So agree for the cultured folks out cultured. there. Cultured. <laughs> so uh, Cole's going to put all the links to all of your content sources and everything in uh, in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So folks can, if if you know where to find your uh, show notes, then then that's where they will be. Okay. Uh, so Cole, what have you been up to? Uh, I had uh, Saturday. I did. I did Pokemon Locals again, uh, just because I'm really liking that game. Uh, I took Rapid Strike Urshifu. Um, I got my butt kicked. <clears throat> that deck is there's there's a, it's like learning how to play Grand Blue all over again because there's like so many different decision tre decision trees that you can go down and need to know what because it's kind of toolboxy, so you need to know what tools are good for what situation. And so it was just it was. I need more practice with that than what I'm currently able to, but I don't have all the cards online, so it's hard for me to actually practice that way without throwing proxies together and playing with people over Skype, but I haven't found a community that does that yet. Anyway. And we don't know how the new Pokemon TCG app is going to handle deck building. Man, I so... I What did I record for 45 minutes talking about that app on Sunday? Yeah. And I still disagree with Steve on I, what it's going to look like. I think his interpretation is completely wrong. I think it is too. Like they, I, I read on... I think it was like a... I don't know if it was leaked or somewhere, but it was like... I think it was listed almost... It looked like almost like a sell sheet, like what you would give to, 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 to distributors or whatever. And it looked like it, it definitely said that copies over uh, four would be turned into crafting material. Yes. Yeah, and then he wasn't no, saying that's that. that's not the part I disagree with. The part I disagree with is one of the initial things they say at the press release is and this is these are the exact words that were read to me no more rng no more trading so it's clear what no more trading means what but what does no more rng mean that means that your whatever you get in a pack is what you get online if they're still doing code cards anyways okay. we don't need to have this <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably know in a month yes i know I'm excited for that app, nonetheless. I, I really like the Pokemon we'll trading see. card game. It's great. Yeah. And uh, Outer Orange, what have you been? What you been playing lately? Um, so my main grind has definitely been Card Fight, uh, Vanguard, obviously. And then on the side, I've been gaming Fallout, but you know that's Fallout. Um, but Fallout. <laughs> so I've been replaying Fallout Four. Oh no, I've been playing. I've been playing four. Three is my favorite. Four is pretty awesome. But I've been replaying that and Genshin, obviously. Um, but yeah, I've been going to locals and stuff like that, and I've been doing like YouTube stuff here and there, and that's much it. Like I'm, I've been uh, brainstorming Shield Fisher and Overdress. That's been my go-to the last couple days, and then uh, I've been also brainstorming Premium Prism with Bermuda Triangle because because I, I had a feeling that the Riviera was gonna get hit. It's with no spoilers, but <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I thought this. I knew that was kind of gonna be a thing, but so I did that, and then in V Premium, I've been actually play testing with Alt Mile because low key now with the promo card. That card, that deck is spicy with Jewel Knights. So I'm just, just saying, that deck mm. is spicy. It's fun. So that's been my go-to stuff. But that's probably what I've been doing. Uh, I think you might have, Will. I don't know. I've had it somewhere around here. But yeah. I, have a, I have a habit of buying clan sets and then, like, literally never taking them out of the plastic. Oh, no. <laughs> so, like, oh, no. There's so much Royal Paladin stuff that I just never built Royal Paladin decks because it's Royal like system. there's got to be a meme that maybe it's like the, the Drake meme where it's like the top box is where Drake is looking away and it says <laughs> really awesome Royal Paladin deck. And then the bottom box would be anything link joker <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's so pretty me. accurate that's uh that's literally me anytime i pick up a different clan that's not bermuda or grand blue or pale moon because i just somehow always go back to those three and then no matter what i'm doing i'm like mm. oh i love this deck two two days later yo i created this ghosty deck and then the shield yeah. fisher deck and then Torga deck and then an alchemagic oh, deck <laughs> yep I'm, I'm even i'm, I'm worse too is like because i can spend time building v premium decks and then it's like i'll sit down to play and i was like but there's gavrail <laughs> I just like to keep bringing out Gabriel because that's so much fun to me. That's fair. That's oh, fair. man. All right. So we're not doing a question of the week. Correct. For, for time purposes, even though we, we're just chatting away here. Yeah. Uh, but I guess somebody did send us an email. Yeah. They got upset um, with so you badgering them. So they sent us let one. Let me dang. 
Uh, let me read this email uh, for our folks. Is that the subject line? Because Will really, really seems to want an email? Yep. Well, I mean, that's an attention grabber there. It, it sure was. And then the body says, but I'm not sure if someone already sent an email because I'm like two weeks behind on program. So I'm kind of curious if I'm the only one from Italy. <laughs> hey, I've called out Italy. I've called out Italy several times. I've been following the podcast since the late G era. I think I started around episode 50. That sounds about right. Maybe less. But I've listened to all episodes and still follow. I used to play the Italian version of Vanguard, which we all know is is a time machine years in the past. <laughs> wow. But pandemic and work and stuff made me drop the TCG right now to play Zero. Uh, I guess Zero JP is the Japanese version yeah, of Zero. Yeah, Japanese version. I mean, yeah. you're in Italy. You can do whatever you want. And keep up with the news because, I mean, I played Japanese Monster Hunter. I, 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 people can do all kinds of things. Uh, yeah. And right now, only play Zero J Japanese and keep up with the news because I find it interesting. I'm considering jumping on Overdress, but I've become very lazy and looking for an Overdress local community is kind of hard, but you never know. Fun fact, I could write this email in Italian and Spanish, but I won't. You will have to trust me, I guess. <laughs> do Cole. I remember he mentioned playing Marvel Champions LCG, and I won't mind him commenting now and then what he thinks about the various packs. That is the only game I kind of play, because you can do that by yourself. Hope this email makes Will smile. I know what it is to be a grumpy old man. I'm not old. Dang. So a random <laughs> smile here and there is good. Uh, you can comment this email on the program if you want. Just keep my personal info anonymous and... Don't read it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's very unreadable <laughs> because English is indeed my third language. Best regards from Italy to all of you, and I hope to listen to many, many more programs. And then ends with when I'm not going to give the name. <laughs> P.S. I have a huge backlog of podcasts, so any outdated things is the fault of my lack of listening time. No, Aww. that's perfectly fine. I wish uh, they had said where in Italy mm -hmm. they are. Man, I spent eight years studying Italian and never got to go to Italy. Wow. That's a shame. Yeah. That's a shame. That's really cute. That was a cute email. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it. But see, the thing is, we we use Simplecast now, right, Cole? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. our podcast distribution service. Yep. And we we can see where people are downloading our program. Down to and the we've city. Got people like all over the world, Australia, Asia, everywhere, even Canada. And, <laughs> and I'm like, just, just send us an email saying, hey, I, I listen in whatever province of Japan, you know, it, just, it doesn't have to say anything, just so we know that people are actually paying attention. But mm -hmm. I mean, I'm glad that we have an Italian listener. Italy has been always been very close to my heart after my eight years of studying italian <laughs> I, I will say and all the italians i grew up with in new york <laughs> oh, yeah. new york new york brings me back uh so i have uh marvel champions uh i have not made time to play it though and i really only have the base set um but my buddy andy who i do the perfect art podcast with uh loves that and plays it with his uh girlfriend and friends all the time uh, so uh, we might throw a little thing in, in the Perfect Art podcast as a little, like, oh, here's what's new with uh, uh, Marvel Champions because we, you know, we we really like a lot of uh, Asmodee uh, and Final... Or not Final Fantasy. Uh, Fantasy Flight uh, AMG sort of games. So uh, that might be a little, little segment in there. Do you like fiddly little tokens? Lots hey. And lots of fiddly little tokens. Hey. <laughs> hey. I mean, yes and no at the same time. <laughs> I mean, Cole and I have been to the headquarters of Fantasy Flight, so... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, played with some cool people there, too. Up. Yeah. All right, what's going on with Vanguard Zero? Because I still, even though... Okay, G is in Zero is only starting in Jap Jap Japan. We Correct. We're not getting it in English yet. Okay. Correct. No, we have okay. two months, I think. If not longer. Two or three. I think it'll probably yeah. be like January Because there was us. like a break month. So yeah, I think I think we yeah, we got, we got, I think there's a three, because we were three months different from them, right? Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not, we're not getting it for a hot second because Legion era is kind of lazy. 
or it feels lengthy anyway. So yeah, whenever Legion ends, we'll be getting it. I think Legion only had like five sets, maybe True. less than that. And you don't even we don't even get all of the so legions. So controversial because so many people who started with original Vanguard once they were like. And I'm, I'm serious. I've heard this so many times. Once there were like two cards in the Vanguard circle, I'm out. <laughs> I don't understand so that weird. at all. Really? But from what we've seen <laughs> down the line from there? Oh, but, they're yeah. going to they're gonna hate what we're talking about later today. If Ooh. two was oh, too many. I, I, I know that. I know that. <laughs> all right. Uh, What's I'll, going on in zero? I'll run through this pretty quickly. Uh, thank you to uh, Mr. Nick Gitalini in our in our Discord who gathers all of our uh, our zero news and literally throws it at me with all caps. Uh, so I'm not going to yell like he was yelling <laughs> at me. Yeah, I just copy and pasted it. G I, starts in two days. Yeah. G starts in two days. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new homepage, new music, uh, characters, and everything. Uh, Chrono is free, but Shion and Mamoru are going to be through G Metals, which you uh, get through story quests and just straight up buying. So you don't actually have to play the story if you just want to pay actual real money and get that uh, skin because it's only a cosmetic skin. It doesn't actually do anything. Um Chrono Jet is going to be the first ranked reward uh, with Blade Master sleeves at uh, uh, Legend Two and Fate Rider sleeves at Legend Five. I don't know who Fate Rider is, but that's what he wrote. Um, uh, people speculated about Gears getting their Legion, and they do indeed. It's going to be a triple rare in the set, um, and so the cross is also going to be in the first set as well. And so if you open up the cross, you pull the cross, you'll get the end as well as a free, you know, like Legion Mate reward or whatever. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if you're a new player, uh, you'll get a hundred of the old packs. These won't they won't be used in the G, uh, the G gotchas. They're going to be used in uh, everything prior to G. Uh, you'll get two super deck medals, which you can use on buying any two super decks. You can get two of the same to get full play sets of everything, or you can uh, get two different clans or whatever they're going to be. Uh, then you'll get thirty V coupons. Which are, you know, fighter tournament things. Which I thought they were getting rid of the fighters tournament. But I could be wrong on that one. Um, 300 gems, which is... Uh, I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice. Uh, and then 50 V medals, which are used for old skins mostly, apparently. Uh, and then if you're a returning player... Uh, so if you haven't logged in before May of 2021... You'll get 80 old packs, 30 V coupons, 300 gems, 50 V medals. Nice. Whew. All right. And then uh, one more for the JP, then I'll have uh, Outer Orange read the English one, and she can yell if she wants to. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Saint, Blow dra uh, Saint Blow is uh, sick, gives all your grade twos resist for the next turn, but like brawlers, la mal. I think that's <laughs> it. Great time to jump into JP, new player slash returning player. Bonus starts October 1st, so don't go in early or you'll miss it. So if I'm you want playing another game through Google Translate, never again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Just you see if you start playing in the English or the global, I should say, uh, you can save up your gems and use those for for the new stuff. It's fine. Everything works yeah. out. Yeah. All right. I need a drink. Take it over. Okay. It's my time. Okay. English side. So we got set 20, Blazing Pair Edition, whatever that is. That's what I'm assuming that's the set. We really saw the first. That's in two days. Well, t technically two. This set has some cool cards. Maybe. Uh, Link Joker gets Garnet Star Dragon. Kagro gets Vortex Dragon Newt. Genesis yep. gets Mint. Aquas gets Tetra Burst. And Bermuda gets Duo Legion. I'll be playing that. Uh, and J if I play it, I'm not going to play it. Uh, Japanese got a uh, JP got a tower event with magnolia oh right the magnolia event and this month so maybe we'll get it in october so we're probably going to get the magnolia too because it's around the same time that makes sense and then miwa and sira skins are available in the b metal shop so you can get nice skins and then Best the... mm -hmm. <laughs> and then rank season 38 starts Woo! on the first legend 10 reward is uh po po is it photon 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 with some sick art Thick art and then l2 so legend 2 you get a the photon sleeves and then legend 5 you get the garnet sleeves and then spikes and kumo event will be in the second half of the month and kumos spikes is the ogle is the ogly ogle legion, legion yeah only double r so go get him <laughs> whatever that means i, I don't know I, I I think, maybe even ogre legion no no ogle know. ogle 
With Ogle. Bloody Ogle, Ogle, freezing Ogle. Oh, okay. So yeah. the only thing, the only part of this that I understand, which uh, I can somewhat explain, is Garnet Star Dragon. Oh, I'm going to get this wrong. It could, it's like, it could Legion with Blaster, no, Blaster Joker, or Photon. Or Photon could Legion with Gar Garnet Star or Blaster Joker. One of those options. It's there. Photon. Photon can Legion with both. Uh, with both. Okay. Garnet is only, which moves it's uh, Photon. So I think what they're saying here is if you pull Garnet Star, you, you're going to get Photon. You're not yeah. going to get Blaster Joker. Right? Correct. Because Blaster Joker doesn't come out yet. Because it just came out in... I just got PTSD. The last I just set. got Blaster Joker PTSD, man. <laughs> oh, Do you remember what happened with that? No, not at all. I, so I ordered, because I wanted a set of every blaster that had ever been made. Mm. Um, and I ordered four of the Legion Rare Blaster Jokers, and I ordered four of the, I guess, Triple Rare Blaster Jokers. So the Legion Rare had the gold border art around the outside uh, i ordered them on tcg player and as i was checking out i clicked the uh make sure that everything is the same rarity button so i got eight triple rare blaster jokers because i wasn't paying attention got it I, yeah that's a pain mm -hmm. <laughs> super uh, depressing okay i've been, I've been there in a similar way i started vanguard like when I first started, and I was mm -hmm. like, "Wow, look at these trial decks! Like five bucks each." I picked them up. I opened them. They're premium. I was like, "Get to be premium." And yeah. I was like, "No." <laughs> and my friend warned me too. They're like, "Don't get the old cards." I get the old cards. Yep. <laughs> yep. I've seen a lot of that happen to a lot of people too. Yep. I'm glad that I started when premium wasn't a thing. It was all one format. But yeah, no, that's a that's a big F right there. <laughs> confusing uh, i feel bad sometimes for the newer folks being a newer folk you know mm -hmm. when i first started i was like what am i looking at yep. what yeah, is all this oh the any, <laughs> any shop that's selling old starter decks they really should tell people hey this is the old format well they unfortunately yeah. they probably don't I got mine know on oh don't shop on amazon <laughs> i didn't know it was right. cool it was golden kagro <laughs> it's, it's fine that was back in the day yeah, oh. by this time next week, we will have the first episode of season two of the Overdress anime mm -hmm. out. Because, as we mentioned, one of our most dedicated listeners' birthday is next week, Sunday. And as their gift from Bushi Road, they're getting the new anime episode on Monday, October 4th. Um, and. So was this in the stream today that they introduced Mirai, Mirai Mini? Mine? Yeah. Uh, I, yes. I, yeah. They introduced like her background and stuff today. Mm -hmm. And she's blind? She's a she blind, blind card fighter. It made sense actually because of her eyes. It was kind of, it was kind of there. They colored her eyes a little bit differently than any of mm. the other characters. So I was actually kind of wondering, I was like, why is she, is she look evil or is she blind? I remember I thinking about that. She's probably is both. It like in Demon Hunter where the one guy has like no pupils, but everybody else does. It's just one color. Like you normally, oh. there's like shading and stuff, so yeah. it was just like straight one color. So it actually made sense that they that that she's blind. Because did they know. explain how she actually plays Vanguard if she can't see the cards? Nope. Um, I assume that's going to be a whole thing. It. Yeah. That'll be that'll be uh, a whole I, episode, I, I guarantee. Oh, probably will be. I assume they're going to give her some backstory. Yeah. They're kind of interesting playing Vanguard blind. And just try to picture it. There was a video a few years ago of i don't think the dude was uh completely blind but very severely um short-sighted or, mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. and like had uh either a screen reader or somebody who was reading the cards to him so that he could play mm. that's interesting yeah because like i think the only thing that sucks about that and i hate to sound like kind of evil about this but like your opponent can like do whatever they want mm. you know like because you can't like See what you can't see the full interaction. I feel like that from that end, it would be kind of painful. I feel like Heck. I would want someone there with me at all times, just watching the opponent. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do those kinds of things even when you can. Exactly. Even good. when you got eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, that's that's why like I, I would i would hope that there would be no one like that out there but you know because like the last thing you would want is to do that to a blind person like how how low yeah. do you gotta be mm -hmm. but you know that's just like such uh an unexplored area is express accessibility in tcgs and like how what can be done because you know one of the things that right. i would think of is making card sleeves with braille or something but then people would say that's cheating because you could feel out the card that you're looking for when you're shuffling or I don't know. I think um, so. on that subject, I think uh, it's going to sound super weird because it can't, it can't be a thing, but you can leave the cards on sleeves and you can feel the texture of the top of them as you're playing because, you know, the rare and double rare and, you know, BR have all different textures. So that way you'll actually know the difference between a common, a rare, and a, you know, all that stuff. It's still a little hard because you can't know if you're looking at a trigger, for instance, or a normal unit. But that would be something, like, just something to think about. But I think if you're blind, there's only so much you can cheat anyway. Like, so it might, it might be able to, there might be able to be a system where you can actually make it work. But it would be hard. The or maybe on the lying and saying they're blind and they're actually not. <laughs> yeah, oh, gosh. You know somebody be... would do it. <sighs> People are the worst. I'm just anyway. thinking, like, like each corner can also have, like, sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting really into this topic. Yeah, but each corner no, that's has, what like, I'm a, saying. A it's such an unexplored, like, it, like, it would be need, super can, cool. We can make it as a topic of uh, a discussion for another time. Uh, I have news. We can make Uno for the blind. Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll get into Bob Cigaro's ride line and, and uh, Mireille Mine. I don't, I'm not exactly sure that's, how, that's her name and how to pronounce it. But she plays uh, Bob Cigara, which is the the seal maiden, a blazing seal ma sealed blaze maiden, is her full name. Um, we're just uh, is it Dragon Empire? Dragon yep. Empire stuff. Dragon Empire. Yeah. Yep. We're just gonna go through, like, give you the gist of what she does. Uh, I'll go in more depth uh, with her uh, on Perfect Guard, so stay tuned Saturday for that. Um, but the basic gist of her is. Uh, she has equipment orders, um, new type of order, and basically they share the Vanguard circle with her, uh, pretty much just like Legion. So, uh, you've got the left slash right deity arms is like, I think that's the, the, or the set orders type, or it's in the, uh, it's the effect, one of the two. I think it's the equipment mm -hmm. order is what the the type is and then left right deity arms is what the like text anyway but basically it's saying that it can be on the left or the right of bob cigara sharing the vanguard circle um the equipment are all grade three orders that we know of so far we we know of four uh that exist but we only know of the effects of two uh so the right is going to be a sh uh Technically, those those sword. should be yeah those should be switched. So the right is the sword that gives the vanguard uh, ten thousand power when it attacks, and you can counterblast two and discard that order uh, to deal the opponent damage if they have four or less. So you ping them for one if they got four or less. Uh, it's kind of hefty, but it's not not bad at all. Also, it's really good that it removes itself, uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. But the left is the shield, and it has a once per turn ability to give the vanguard plus ten thousand power when you're being attacked so it's like a 10k guard in your hand but it's an order so there's no way for your opponent to get around it as far as i know right now so that's pretty cool um and it lives on the field it doesn't move to the guard circle correct so yep it's like it's not disposed of after it's used yep uh so that's actually really nice um the there are there are other twos that we've seen the art form and they the art go on specific sides, so you'll have that uh, that sort of panoramic view, the full uh, picture, no matter which one you're on. Uh, these are orders, so you can only play one per turn. Um, so keep that in mind. And uh, the if you want to play a a a right or uh, a new right order on top of an old old right order, so like if you wanted to play, I think it's a crossbow on top of the shield. I think they're both left, so you can play it That's on top. Okay. It, the shield would go away. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can keep that shield there for guard, or I'm assuming that the crossbow is going to have more 
offensive capability. So you're giving up your shield in order for a more uh, offensive thing. So it's a really nice uh, balance going back and forth. It's really creative overall. Big fan of it. Um, the grade one ride line, I'm not going to name the dude, uh, but you have to yeah. ride on the specific grade zero. So you can't uh, juke your opponent out with playing like the Sunrise Egg or Trick Star or whatever has to yep. be this specific uh, grade zero. You can Soul Blast one and look for the sword or the shield. It's specifically the sword or the shield with a raw, with their long, complicated names. So uh, in set four, we're going to get, I think it's the spear and the crossbow. So you'll get those in the set, and those can't be searched out. It's the same thing that Virena can't be, you know, uh, Re- Rea, Reno searches out for, no, Rayu. Nirvana searches for, for no, the grade two, two searches for Verena, but it's specifically the Verena. Yeah, it's the same not thing. Not the other ones, mm-hmm. which was really sad when I found that out. I was like, oh. Yeah, we all did that. <laughs> I, I like this deck. Yep. I don't like it as much now. <laughs> Uh, the great, do that. the the great two. <laughs> he reads cards. <laughs> uh, the the great two. When you ride on the uh, the great one, uh, will search for an arm in the drop. Uh, they're called arms, whatever. Search for that in the drop zone, and you add it to hand. So right there, uh, a lot of value, just searching for it, and then being able to to discard it in order to ride it, and then grab it right back. Very uh very Zorga ride line. Uh, so big fan of that, big fan of that. Correct, that is absolutely oh, correct. Because <laughs> we're about to go into the abyss. Yeah. Oh, the ban list, my favorite, my favorite subject. Banned right. and restricted. Let's let's not, because we we get too tied up on bans. Although there's plenty of that. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's banned and restricted, but lots of bans in the restrictions. Eleven, yeah. eleven bans. <laughs> All right, let me do the the choice restriction. So um, choice restriction means that you can have one or the other, Mm -hmm. but not both. And um, in the cases of these where you can have multiples of it, you can have four of one or four of the other. It's it's like absolutely if you if you have even one of one of the cards you can have none of the other card Mm -hmm. but you can have up to four of whichever card you do choose so let's go through this uh first one the xeroth dragon ultima which was for the uh united sanctuary (laughs) united sanctuary Sanctuary. (laughs) or united yeah uh so that's the one that applies all trigger effects to all units um and you search your deck for two cards and put them on the top of your deck yeah uh so you can either play that xeroth dragon or and i guess it would be the keter sanctuary over trigger they say over trigger or i guess if there's over triggers that are uh cray elementals or new over triggers too or new over triggers so you either can play ultima or over trigger you cannot play both Mm -hmm. in the deck um uh, clearly you know doing an attack with ultima and then (laughs) pulling an over trigger is just too much yeah that's just too wild but um, Uh, most people will say that if you're going into ultima though you've already won the game just because ultima is so strong so it's like it's like a win more strategy but just Mm -hmm. the fact that they're they're stepping up and they're saying that you can't do this is pretty nice Yeah. yeah yeah i agree all right so, colorful Posturel, Fina, and Unbelievable Girl Potpourri uh, are all choice restricted. So you could have one of those three, but not any duplication multiples of them. So these are. Are these? Do you know how these work? Uh, uh, no. Bermuda Triangle expert, it? explain. Yeah, go for it. All right. So pretty much what happens here is Fina has a scale that says. Once per turn, you can Soul Blast two cards, and you get the skill that your on-hit abilities hit no matter what. So mm-hmm. any on-hit it hits. Now, Papuri has a skill that says that when she hits, you can bring a card back and call another one. And I believe it gets 3k. I could be wrong about the power. 
So what happens here is that after rewriting with Tro and everything, getting your force markers, you can go into Fina and then stri you can use her skill and then use Tro to stride into a grade four, which is Revere. Then you can have Papuri on each side with some resist units in the back. And you can literally just bounce these two cards back and forth like this. Like literally the way I'm doing this, you use Papuri, bounce her back, put a new one down, bounce. you just go like this. You just flop back and forth. And there's no Soul Blast. No counter blast that requires to do this after that soul blast cost. And what makes it even dumber is that with the force numbers, it gains power, and you can't pop it off because there's a grade one that gives resist to that column. So you literally can't denial griffin it. So mm -hmm. the only way you can stop it is like a Hugo board wipe or something like that, essentially. And yeah, it's pretty free, and you literally just keep going until your opponent either has enough defenses or you know that where it doesn't hit anymore. So it just it just keeps 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 going. It's pretty degenerate. It's not the worst loop in the world, but it's a uh, it's not fun. <laughs> hmm. I played I, I and love, I was like, this is strong. I love that I was reading this as if it was three cards. It's two cards. Calico it's only two. Pastoral, Fina, and Unbelievable yeah. Girl, Potpourri. Yep. And they are Bermudas. Yep. Yes, this is Bermuda right. Triangle. Okay. Uh, next one is Gear Chronicle. No. Nope. Uh, no? This is DI. DI. A dark Irregulars Dark oh, and an they're, Overdress I mean, Unit. They're all so confusing. All right. So. You guys need pictures. <laughs> yeah, King of Masks, Dantarian V version, and Steam Mage, Steam Mage, Asher Dodd, which is Overdress Set Three. Yep. Uh, so that's because it was uh, to what you can get up to forty k shield. So yeah, so yeah. Asherda says that when he's placed in the Guardian Circle, give five k shield to himself, and then when he's retired, he goes back into the Soul. And Dantarian says you can guard with grade two or greater cards from your Soul. So if you can get all four in, which is super easy, you can just pop all four of the Ashurdas out, forty k shield for that battle. Then they go back in the next battle, forty k, and it just oh, keeps uh, going yeah. back and forth. When uh, so Ash yeah. When Asherta was revealed, uh, Mori P actually sent out a tweet says, we know how this works with Dantarian. This will be addressed in a future uh, update, and it has been addressed here. Very much banned instantly because you just mm -hmm. literally don't die. Yeah. Uh, turns out right. 40k Hail, guard's I pretty nice. Pale Moon. <laughs> Purple Trapezist original, mm -hmm. original flavor. Mm -hmm. Jumping Jill V premium flavor. And flying Periton, which is a Pegasus-looking dude, original yep. flavor, uh, and they just had a bunch of interactions. I mean, they've they've been gunning for purple trapezes for like That's yeah. So long. It was I think it was I originally it was a, a, a choice of trick between trapezes and Jill. I think and before, yeah. and then they added Periton. So you can only have one. Uh, you, uh, you can only one have of one of the three. three in your deck. Yes. So that's the first time I've seen one of three. <laughs> that's an interesting like good choice restriction honestly mm -hmm. i thought i honestly see them surprised it lasted this long <laughs> yeah well i mean they they so one of the things that they said in the announcement was right and they said this multiple times that they were looking very closely at the western premium yep. game in in making this ban and restricted list and i think it, is it our general feeling that in japan they don't play premium as much as correct they do here Correct. Yes. So, I have yeah. been hearing they're slowly starting to get back more into it. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing that there's a little bit kind of a push for premium more recently. So yeah, yeah. and also the shout call back to our episode I think two weeks ago that all of this is announced today, and it goes into effect October first for everybody, everybody English and Japanese. Yep. So there's no delay in when banned and restricted go. Uh, for yeah. us or anything like that yeah it's right. really nice i'm gonna say card names that are now completely banned from the game killed destroyed don't spend your hard-earned money unless you're playing with friends uh and you guys tell me what they did and why they were bad okay <laughs> <laughs> oh no anyways <laughs> Rain Elemental Zarzan. Did this dude is <laughs> everybody's hated him since before he was even ink on paper. Yep. Rain Elemental Zarzan. What's the deal? Um so Zazan lets you on place soul blast 
all two units, and if they're units without any skills on them, vanillas is something that people like to call them, you draw two and you flip a cyclone from your G-Zone face up. And this is really, really good because you can have vanillas instantly turn from 7k bases to 13k bases because they get 5k for every cyclone flipped. On top of the fact that you have a rush turn because you can on place call this and then instantly start calling cards out there vanillas creating a board and then you get your hand back you you call two and then you draw two so it also helps you push through the deck faster mm -hmm. which causes a lot of issues on top of the fact that it also causes some boring issues as it forces people to play like more vanillas in their decks which isn't as fun so uh this card was a huge problem at four it was still a semi problem for some decks at one but i think just getting rid of it was the goal because it's not so much that skill it's actually the fact that it flips something in your g zone mm -hmm. activating gb1 mm -hmm. which is generation break and that is where the problem started happening with the card because there's too many decks that started flourishing off of being on gb1 so early it is a grade one unit so you can start gb1 on grade one and in some decks that's way too much so that's why they that card is just that card's gone Yep. <laughs> yeah, even with Sabreeze, there was not only was it like your opponent had to at least be at grade two, it, there were other conditions for being able yeah. to surprise stride Sabreeze. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Counterblast 2. It's, it's Counterblast cool. 2. They had to have not have ridden at all and still be at mm -hmm. grade two. So the way to play it around it was A, don't give him two Counterblasts, and B, just right. rewrite a grade two. Yeah. <laughs> so there there are ways to get around there's not really ways to get around uh zarzan for a soul blast so if you ride it no. then you can start popping things off and then yeah, a lot of even... and yeah any deck that could search it and play yep. it and call it could just abuse it blue. yeah grand blue for yeah. sure grand blue column bard counter counter blast search for zazan call it out instantly go into a rush turn Easy. Which yeah, which was like the main Grand Blue build, and that's why people were were saying that Grand Blue was too good and needed to get hit because it had such can I also say easy search. I'm so excited that I can now play Grand Blue in premium without having to buy a bunch of other stuff. It's really nice. <laughs> I don't already have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can actually play it normally. Um, honestly, the deck didn't change too too much with its alterations because it was mainly uh so the way songs list is probably the best list out there right now for the current with before the ban list stuff but it was beatrice and a bunch of old stuff with a ton of draw it was just a big draw engine and a bit a big beefy pan getting to all your mm -hmm. big pieces and just steamrolling essentially but you're like controlling the tempo which is what made it such an awesome deck i played tested like literally last week and i was like this deck is this deck is so good like so there's a lot of brains that went into it i love it yeah Oh, nice. dude, and like right. his thought process was like, oh, nice. Anyway, Moving Tempest on. Sphere. I mean, we can still t keep talking about Grand Blue because obviously Tempest Sphere was <laughs> a Grand Blue issue as well. Uh, uh, what does actually. Tempest Sphere do? It's an order card. Yeah, it's Counterblast One. Uh, it's called was it, uh, check the top. Counterblast flip a G zone. But you had to card. check. You had to check the top seven, I think, and then. You get two cards. If two of them were vanilla, then you can flip yep. anything. Oh, no, no, no. You flip anyway. It's kind of oh, you flip anyway? one, flip something, and then you look at top seven cards for two vanillas. You don't have to pick up anything. You can pick up nothing, and you can just put them, you put them back. Like, you just show Gotcha. Them. Okay. So you can pick up heels, any vanilla cards, whatever, but the condition of the cost is literally counterblast flip a G-Zone unit. Oh. If, I, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure that's how it is, because some people would literally just activate it just for the flip. Let me Let me have sure. a look. You can you can double check for me because I it's been a second since I've looked at the, the card's actual full skill. <laughs> Tempest Fear possible. pulled up on TCG Player. That's funny. Uh, correct. No, you're right. Yeah. Because yep. I remember some people were just using it literally for the flip, not even for the vanilla aspect. The vanilla aspect is nice because you can pick up heals with it, which is another reason why that card was pretty good. Uh, the yeah. flip is definitely a problem. It's a little bit more easier to counterplay since it's a counter blast. But you know, with heal guardians coming out, Bobo existing, and it doesn't. Honestly, Wong. it's not that. And there's even in Grand and not Grand Blue and Gold Paladins is a card that lets you self damage. So like honestly, that. That counter blast is is not as deniable as, as it may seem. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why they got rid of it. And I'm I'm for it. I want to see that card gone. And I'm happy it is. Yep. All right. Freezing witch, Bendy, a shadow paladin. Uh, I'll leave that to Cole. Yeah. So this <laughs> is this was mainly used in the ward. So basically, what she does is uh, I don't remember exactly what she does, but she's a way to. Uh, superior ride and get uh, phantom blaster dragon out yeah. um, so you can accelerate to grade three when you're on grade one 
Because you can get Blaster Dark from her, and then go from Blaster Dark into uh, PDB, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and it's but, only a Soul Blast, so it's easy. Yeah, so then you can you can jump ahead, and uh, Luard was taking advantage of this. It's it's why, uh, it's the main reason why uh, Nemain got banned, uh, choice restricted, I should say, in V, in uh, with Luard in the first place, because Nemain could look for Bendy, and then Bendy would then... Um, superior ride and accelerate your force markers and then just start steamrolling your opponent yeah. that way so it's the same thing but in premium except now they just got rid of the the problem card with yep. being bendy so so um, you had to be on grade two because you had to be on blaster dark as your vanguard yes mm -hmm. but it would immediately get you to phantom blaster dragon yeah. on your grade Very two free. card all right goddess of sound sleep Tahro. This sounds like a Genesis unit. That is correct. It is, and it's a stand. And all she does is just accelerate loops and continue them. She was the like any Genesis loop. She's the key piece. She just keeps going back into the deck. When you Soul Blaster, yeah. she restands something and goes back into the deck basically. And so basically, you get your Genesis deck super low, and then just keep recycling her out of the Soul and just keep yep. restanding. That's a big uh, Soul Charging uh, Engine. You get your mm -hmm. cards down to like eight cards and then you just keep looping the stands yep uh it, it i'm That's glad it got angel hit angel feather doctoroid refrosy so yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah a little uh -huh. bit yeah back in the day yep all right here's now we get into the controversy or the <laughs> lack of controversy <laughs> shura stealth dragon jammy okongo god thank god it's gone yeah cards uh, sucked so so that jammy okongo says uh your opponent's hand becomes six unless you have a grade three in your soul and then it becomes four instead this is it checks at the beginning of your turn and then at the end of oh wait it's the beginning end of your opponent's turn and end of your turn i think is what it was like it, it checks both players turns um so like it's hard to play the game that uses your hand as a resource if you have only four cards so it was just it just yeah. didn't let you do anything um, that and impressive. also with the new stuff coming out, with the new 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 Batama stuff coming out, which is also really good. Like uh, it only Die you know, makes stuff like this even stupid. So mm -hmm. stupider, I should say. But yeah, so I'm glad this card's gone. I only faced it once and I hated it. I was like, this is this is this is awful. Oh, it's not fun. I used to run it, and it's the main reason why I stopped playing New Batama. <laughs> it's because yeah, like just... when it first came out, I was like, oh, and then I took all my opponent's hands down to four. I'm like. I don't want to play this anymore. This isn't fun. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel good about it. Yeah. And that was in V premium too. That wasn't even in premium either. Ooh. Ooh. So here's the card that I should have known better. But when I was watching all the streams and announcements and everything, I just, for some reason, it had like a mental block. I was so confused. And I was like, why are they banning a deleter? Uh, <laughs> Ambush Demon Stealth Beast Nue Dio, who looks... Very much like a deleter. No, he's he's a big tiger who's like hunched over and he's got like claws. He looks out like of him. a centipede. No, I be okay. You're not wrong. It's, it's, um, it's Murakumo. <laughs> yeah, it's Murakumo. This is this is this was like the boogeyman to me. This one and another one, which we'll get to later. Spoiler mm -hmm. alert. Was like the worst thing to happen to premium. Uh, just because it's it's such such a push card and it 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 does three different card effects on and on one. one card and like none of them are fun none of them are like interesting player against you can't play against it uh especially if you're running um huga huga just sets this card up for free basically and, and then, yeah boom you're done uh so. Well, so okay so to clarify it's a stride yeah if you have the huga skill activated which gives all of your cards the same name mm-hmm Yep. You can stride Nue Dio without paying the stride cost. You don't yep. have to discard for three. Yep. Um, uh, and your opponent can only call cards from hand to the guard circle, so mm -hmm. no intercept, and they must call five or more cards at the same time. It's yep. not even It's not even no intercept. It's no G-guards either. It's no like yep. superior calling cards from the drop zone. Uh, like, Grand Blue could do that too. Like, it shuts down so much just from that keep in mind it is like that for that battle not for all the battles just something to note like it's specifically that battle so normally you just take the vanguard it's the rear guards that are the problem but you yeah. the vanguard taking is easy yeah 
and also when it attacks uh, face up something in the G zone and all of the rear guards with the same card name as one of your rear guards restand. So they all, all, your, all your rear guards restand. So. And if you have vanillas in the deck, you flip a cyclone for this cost. Because it does say you flip a G zone unit. And guess what? Your boys just got even beefier. Oh, no. All right. It was, it was rough. It's a rough card. Stealth Rogue of Concealment. Tanba, another Murakamo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This one was a little bit of an unknown one because there's only a few people that really talked about this card. I personally don't know exactly where the degeneracy comes with this card, but I do know that there was something crazy that I could do. Yeah. Uh, also a loop thing. It was a, a part of the infinite loops in for Murakumo again. Like you had two different builds. You had the new Adayo and then you had the infinite loop build, uh, basically. Um, I know that TIE Fighter had a video on it, and then he, on his stream, I was ch uh, checking in as I was doing the doc. He's like, I think I'm going to take that list down because it has this, it wasn't fun, and it has this band card in it, so I'll probably just take that down. Mm. But uh, it existed at one point, so the deck was not fun to play or play against. Um, so so there's that, and they, they, they killed it. <laughs> they also just reprinted it, too, in Revival Collection. So, uh, of I mean, course. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, there's there's quite a few actually that got reprinted. So, Eesh. all right, Turmoil Starvator Zinc. This is an oldie. Mm -hmm. Um, so just to explain, it's a Link Joker, and what it did was you soul charged Zinc when it was on the rear guard circle, and you had to have a Chaos Vanguard so this wouldn't work for Messiah. Uh, and your opponent had to have a locked card, which, you know, it happens. Uh, and you just counter charge two, soul charge two. Mm -hmm. So this was basically just a cost enabler for Chaos Breaker, uh, because all of the Chaos Breaker things either require a counter blast or a soul blast in order, and it's typically to lock your opponent's cards. Uh, so it just, just made it way too easy for Chaos Breaker to get the skills off and to just get those lock chains going mm -hmm. um so i mean that's clear and my suspicion is looking at what's coming down the line in v premium for link joker that they saw that this was gonna just really tilt things a little too far yep. yeah and i also feel like in the in the vacuum that all these band cards like the 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 meta space it's going to leave. It's going to be a bit of a slower meta now, theoretically. Yeah. Uh, less acceleration and whatnot. So uh, Chaos kind of thrives on the slower game. So that also might yeah. be a thing. But we'll know for sure in a couple of days when they re release like the reasoning behind the hits, um, mm -hmm. which they're going to do. So that's going to mean actually pretty interesting to read. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and this is definitely like, right, for all of Link Joker to only have four, like a four four of the cards banned right that it's easy enough to work around yeah <laughs> unless you're pale moon the, the linchpin for the chaos play so <laughs> yeah all right evil god pontiff gastiel diamonas diamonas yeah diamonas uh this, this card this card was also the other boogeyman um this card let you basically zero to six your opponent in a, in a single turn i don't know exactly all of the uh all of the specific combos because i knew that this card existed i just kind of like stopped paying attention but we'll let outer orange take over for this one uh so i've only seen it a couple times but you can pretty much copy um you can copy, you can copy any copy, card you copy two cards and with the camera blast i think i retire i believe that's the way the full effect is uh but pretty much there is that one card it's coming it's not coming to my name it's is not it, coming to me brufus is, brufus. So you can copy brufus and you can copy um gastille the v premium gastille brufus lets you soul charge certain cards and gastille says depending on the conditions of your soul you get uh special conditions some of which your autos don't activate you have to take a damage and your front board gets crits so what happens here is even at zero damage with their soul getting up to 20 they can start smacking you in the face for like to for like really high numbers and you can't activate pgs like all this other stuff and mm -hmm. pretty much you just die they just you, they soul charge through their entire deck and then they just kill you and it doesn't matter if you you can put them they can bobo to get their damage out and all this stuff so you literally can deny, deny them and they'll just still come back mm -hmm. yeah and, and of course like um, other stuff makes it bigger every soul charge gives your front row plus 3k yep 
And yes. So you're immediately yeah. giving your front row plus six for the two that you soul charge, and then any other soul charges you do that turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you run. Worse. Can't remember the exact card, but there's a couple cards that kind of uh, accelerate the soul even faster that more recently there's so came many. out, and that kind of also added to the boogeyman system. There's so many cards that like accelerate. Um, yeah. Gameplay, but the fact the the thing is though that Diamondus can grab any two cards from your deck, so there's literally any card in in that ever comes out ever for uh, dark regulars or now dark states or dark so yeah dark states. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and D is now playable, well, would have been playable with uh, Gastille. So they, all of the, the future cards, while Diamond has existed, they had to like think of that card when they're designing it. So like the quality kind of goes down a bit um, yep. of the new card design. So like, honestly, yeah. it needed to get hit. Um, unfor it's, if, you, if you're having fun with it, it's a really cool card, but it's so, it's too easy to break. So... And also, like, it was really good with NLK back in the day. And yep. then and then Brufus came out, and Brufus was like, oh, it's pretty spicy. Mm -hmm. And then we get the new Gastille, and it's like, oh, it's even more spicy. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Fair it's... Magnus, there's their uh, notorious, a really, really, really good DI player has mm. been messing around with Bear Magnus and Brufus, or Bear Magnus and NLK, doing some crazy stuff because there is that card which is hard leg that says you have a three card guard restrict so you can ride you can take the copy the skills of the bear magnus and then just take from you and bear magnus lets you grab two cards from soul so you can grab out hard leg and like another guard the guard the, guard, the other guard restricting you that says you can only block with 20k intervals mm. so you have a three card guard oh. restrict and a 20k interval hope on, on damp on yeah <laughs> so that... yeah you can do some crazy stuff i used to run a version of that in in v premium when those cards were legal before uh, Butterfly to Moonlight came and then made those cards illegal in V Premium. Uh, yep. Or at least uh, Hard Leg. Hard Leg and Flanger. They, they got yeah. the hit. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Trust me, I, I know that band very well. I remember I saw it and I was like, well, yeah. it was nice having you, Flanger, while it lasted. Bye yeah. bye. No, I love that card. <laughs> that yep. card was so funny. I went to Regionals as a three month player. I was playing the game for literally three months. <laughs> and I was sacking, and I was sacking my wins through Flanger. <laughs> People, because people didn't even know what Grand Blue did. They're like, what does this even do? And I'm like, oh, I mill and I get power with my crits. And and there's that flanger card. And they're like, what does that do? I was like, I just card my whole hand and you can't guard with anything. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny too is like at that time, around that time, everybody was like, fear the deer. Oracle Think Tank, watch for the deer. It wasn't even it's, that like, it's not their vanguard attack that's the that's the killer. It's the deer that's the killer. Oh. And nobody was paying attention to that. Like for Grand Blue, flanger was the killer. Yep. Right. Flanger was okay. <laughs> it was like don't don't watch don't watch for the vanguard attack watch for that flanker attack yeah because yeah. you just you sometimes if you're at five damage you unless you heal through it you have to take it and if you put crits on that <laughs> and you all right in premium i tried to build with, with flanger and then just I'm beefing sorry. up well i it was like regular night rose and my like last attack was flanger and i set it up with mike the ship right behind it so mike the ship right was boosting for three hundred thousand, and flanger was like oh you can't guard with what you who's it's but like i couldn't keep my hand up so i was like oh you can't guard with grade zeros okay and they just perfect guard it or i couldn't get my damn it, it's fine it was bad but it was fun anyway. but it was bad you can just g guard it that's the thing like it's sadly like it's not great in premium mm. you just you just you intercept with it you can guard from soul like, there's just too many ways you can get around it yep pale moon visible songster it's a little too simple um she is a card that says counter blast you pretty much i think you would call call unit from soul against 3k or something like that but pretty much, long story short, her the whole the whole gimmick of her is that her and flying parents and a purple trapezes and jumping Jill and that whole combo can pretty much recycle your with rain with a with the rain elemental tier. You can pretty much just recycle your counter charging and your soul blasting. You literally just cycle through your soul like this, and you keep bringing out the one the ulterity man. Ulterity man says for like you soul blast he gains 3k power and then you just you bring him out you do that and you bring him in and then you do it all over again bring him out and do that and you pretty much keep attacking for like 40k numbers it's a really stupid loop actually once you get it rolling it's peace reliant but it's a dumb loop like once it happens mm -hmm. it's pretty much gg yeah you, you can't you can't kill it yep it's a shame because our art looks great it does it's a very pretty card and our final ban is now there's multiple twas this is this the original is spirited star twa mm -hmm. which is bermuda three, 
It is a mm -hmm. grade three Bermuda Triangle. Uh, and it has a on hand skill. What does it do? So the way this card works with one counter blast open, normally people don't give it to you, but if you do, what you do is you call her from hand. And if you did, you can search for a grade three Riviere, ride it instantly. And then, and then so you get the force marker. And then instantly as that happens, if you did do that, you can go into stride with the grade four Riviere. So, which is pretty interesting, uh, obviously, because that's a superior ride. But the issue isn't really that. It's more so the fact that there's already a superior ride engine between grade one to two. So what you can do if you go first, you can, you can superior ride from one to two. And then on your next turn, you can spear ride from grade two to four. And then keep in mind, your opponent is still on like, you know, grade one, maybe grade two. And then you're poking them very friendly with your with your grade four and your rear guards that bounce back and do a ton of stuff. So it's 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 pretty bad. I'm glad that card's gone uh, because now we can just appear ride from one to two and then just, you know, figure it out from there. So but there's a lot of hand that you lose if you do it this way, but that's why there's lots of like melody units that people sometimes run to gain power to kind of do other things and, or draw or whatever else. But yeah, it was, it was, a, little, it was a little too too strong in my opinion. I tested that and I was like, the Papuri bloop we talked about, in my opinion, was actually better. So I'm that, but I, I do think that this was like, this needed to go to. So I'm glad it's gone. All right. And now for the thing where to me, it's always like, this isn't confusing at all, and yet for a huge portion of the Vanguard community, it's maybe they just miscommunicated it. Maybe I guess it did take a few times of me hearing it for me to actually understand what was going on. So this is a rule change that applies, the way that they describe it is it applies to stand triggers, but it's a little more than that because it is how stand triggers interact with rear guard circles that have drive checks. So, not that common. <laughs> well, I guess with the with the image tokens, right? Yep. Yep. Vision, vision tokens. Vision tokens, Valkyria. Um, more common. Uh, does what's his name? The the astral plane dude. Valkyrian count as a rear guard circle? Yep. Uh, yes, yes well, technically. The way he works, because he drive checks, you can restand him. Mm -hmm. mm. If you land a stand. And the rule is if a rear guard reveals a stand trigger for its drive check, and that rear guard stands by its effect, that drive check will be fully performed. Okay, that's part a but there's part b um or i guess that's part b part mm -hmm. a is rear guards that stand by a stand trigger cannot perform drive checks until end of turn i hate the way that they worded this i hate everything but about this yeah Why? basically uh it's just it's just poorly worded P I poorly think worded makes it yeah really confusing yes uh, um so the first part is if you have a rear guard that can do drive checks and it has already attacked or is rested for whatever reason and a stand trigger restands it the next time that it attacks or after it's been restood it does not do drive checks any longer yeah period done correct so you only have one chance for your rear guard that does drive checks to do drive checks it can attack again it just doesn't get to do drive checks for those yeah yeah um, and then the other part is, because that first part was written in such a confusing way, is um, if you are using a rear guard that does drive checks and you get a stand trigger, you can restand the re the rear guard that's attacking. But if that's like, if it's getting twin drive, you still do the second drive check. It doesn't halt the drive check. Correct. I wrote that word from word on the ink from the English slide. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why this like I've seen it before. And it's like this is written so poorly. It's so confusing. People are just going to be so like, especially folks who are like super rules sharks. They're just like looking at every word. It's like cannot perform drive checks until end of turn. Okay, so it just saves up those drive checks until the end of the turn, and then it. Does yeah. Them. Yeah, it's a judge call. Yeah, every time. It, it's so <laughs> it's so stupid. 
I, I don't and understand it just, it. Basically, it. just it's all it means is that rear guards that do drive checks can only do them basically once per turn. Yeah, if they, if they're restood. Uh, I hate I hate how it says like they they highlight it at the end. It says that drive check will be fully performed if like referring to checking a stand trigger, but you still have more checks afterwards. Because when that reading that, it sounds like when I hit that stand trigger, that's it. I'm done. I can't. I can't continue my checks, but that's not actually what it means. It means you finish your drive checks because that's still part of the, the previous skill yeah, or part of the effect. The the science of it is the drive check is the action of going through and revealing the cards from your top of your deck. So a regular drive check, you reveal one card. Mm -hmm. With twin drive, you reveal two cards so fully performing a drive check means you reveal as many of the cards as were supposed to be revealed as part of that drive check you see that's yep. like chemistry <laughs> yep it's like the, the fix is great don't get me wrong the fix is great um it fix it fixes a lot of things uh but it was not worded correctly it feels like this was translated almost word for word from English or from j j uh, Japanese to English, but it wasn't idiot proofed. Let's say. Yes. They traveled to 1984, <laughs> got a Japanese to English translator for VCR manuals, and then said, please to make a translation of this ruling judgment. Mm, yep. And that, VCR manual translator said, "Finally, my skills are needed again after in these many decades." And they asked what a what giant deity of distant world Valkyrian is. <laughs> What's a stand trigger? <laughs> What's a VCR? <laughs> Ooh, that's uh. a V premium. Great segue. Mm. <laughs> to v, v, VCR is uh, V Premium Clan Recognition, which is what we're going to do. <laughs> Correct. Correct. You get it. You get it. A plus. Oh, man. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> All right. All right. So we did talk about Outer Orange at the beginning of the program a little bit, but... What what other background can you give us about yourself? How did you come into Vanguard? Did you just walk up and to Amazon and say, "Oh, look, the art on this card looks so pretty. I must play game." That's I mean, that's literally how I started. But what's your origin story? Um, yeah, so I was in college. Just went through a pretty pretty hefty breakup and it's just, I know it sounds weird, but it'll, it'll make sense. But it's not weird, not... but the biggest mistake you make is dating anybody in the first place. Never. <laughs> oh, perfect. But the thing is, the person I dated was like super against anime and all this stuff. It just kind of wasn't this thing. And during the time we were dating, I started I would start going to anime club. And after our breakup and everything like that, I actually met someone in anime club who plays Vanguard. Essentially, we had like a game night stuff like that. And then they introduced me to the game. And they kind of asked me like they they tried very hard to get me into it. They were very advocate about it, and I was kind of like. Uh, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of here, kind of not, you know, I'm kind of feeling it. And then they're like, okay, 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 what do you like to play? What do you play Yu-Gi-Oh? And I was like, yeah, I played with, like, the zombie decks, all that stuff. So then, like, uh, he was like, all right, I got the perfect clamp for you. I got it. See, he bought out, he bought everything but Baskirk pretty much for me. And one day just showed up with the whole deck and, of, of Grand Blue. And he was like, here, try this. Pretty fun. Just try it out. And I was like, sure i mean you're like i got the whole deck and everything and then we bought the brass Kirks together and because this is during the era where kokaitis in v premium hasn't come out this was like 2019 it was like may it was like it was like april may mm -hmm. so bermuda yep. triangle was like was like just coming out like, oh, you know, I a lot remember. Of the melody era pretty much mm -hmm. right before that or something like that but anyway so he got me in and i pretty much just started from there and i was really shy about it at first because i i we used to play Magic the Gathering for a very brief second, and I got pretty bamboozled by it by a certain someone. I went to a locals. They didn't like the fact that I was a female, and I really, and after that, I was, like, super shut down by cards. Yeah, I was, like, five years back. I kid you not, the guy literally didn't want to play me because I was a woman. I, I'm not even joking. It was, like, 2014, and I was like, all right, well, screw you. I'm just, I'm going to leave now. I'm never touching Magic again. Um, this was a long time ago, but anyway, so touching cards again was kind of weird to me. I, I collected Yu-Gi-Oh cards like prior, 
and I had Yu-Gi-Oh cards for like for years. Like I actually sold them all and made like six hundred dollars off of it and put it into Vanguard for a while back. Yeah, I know. Um, and so going back into card to getting into card for Vanguard was really weird. But this guy was like really advocate. He was like pushing me to go to locals, pushing me to do this, pushing me to that. And I just eventually broke through and I started liking the game more. But once Kokai just came out, there's my husband. Yeah, <laughs> I do this all the time. I gotta get my husband out. Once Kokaitis came out, my husband, there he is, in, in all his glory, mm. um, I was really hooked into the game. I don't know why. His skill was so defensive and stuff like that. It wasn't the best skill that came out. could have been better. It doesn't really matter. But I just really, really liked uh, really like the start of the game and then regionals was around the corner uh but i took i got my best friend into the game and then my you know my friend that got me into the game and we all went to regionals together and then post malone funnily enough was literally the night before <laughs> <laughs> same so in this in the place i went to regionals post malone was also doing uh, his thing so literally like the building of post malone is like right here and regionals was like right here it was like a walking distance so like i came back at three in the morning from post malone and then literally five hours later was already going to regionals for a v premium uh, it was very fun and i had a blast with that and i just pretty much started from there sadly my competitive end has been kind of small because the minute i wanted to go to spring fest uh covid happened and yeah the lockdowns happened and everything got kind of kind of shut down mm -hmm. uh but uh, i just i really liked carpet vanguard and i just really want to keep going zero kind of came out during the time so it's kind of easy to stick with the game and uh, it's funny enough i just got a grand blue premium deck right when the shutdown happened like i got it like a yeah. month before i was super excited and then everything got shut down <laughs> That's pretty much that's pretty much what got me into Vanguard. The art's really awesome, and there, there's just there's just something about Vanguard, and I think has, a lot of it has to do with the community too that I just don't see in other communities. There's some kind yeah. of like wholesomeness uh, the, behind the people that play the game. There's some kind of like heart behind it that you don't really see with Yu-Gi-Oh. It's kind of it's a good thing and a bad thing to be honest. People are really connected to their cards, whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh, people are like, oh this, yeah, just get that out of here. I would say toss probably that. for the majority of Vanguard players, we recognize what a small percentage of the tcg market we are yeah. so we have to band together <laughs> <laughs> maybe mm. i don't know there's just something um something different about the way and i love it i love it there's just something uh, i think maybe it's the way the card games market is something where you like you took your vanguard and your rear guards are your friends mm. and there's something about the that interaction of emotion that that brings out in vanguard that you just don't see in other card games like other card games it's like i banish my monster to get a stronger monster whereas in this game it's like my monsters are here to help me to save my vanguard it's got like a complete opposite uh mental flip and i think that's yeah. what causes people to get so attached which i like which I, I i like it so that's what pretty much got me into the game so yeah all right here we are so you you've said grand blue several times what are your other clans that you like to play uh so i when i first started i picked up grand blue and i picked up golds uh, i was i really liked ezel golds like i didn't actually had no idea what it did i literally picked it up because it looked cool and i thought the blonde ezel was a woman and i just thought she looked hot oh we all guy. thought that at one point oh <laughs> uh, yeah mm -hmm. and i was like oh this is a d i got the cars in the mail and i was like Oh, it's a dude. <laughs> and immediately sold him. <laughs> no, 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 I can't say. I actually I mean, I, it didn't I, help <laughs> that uh what's her name from the anime? Corin who was playing Ezel. Cor Corin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Know about She's blonde. I I swear I was like this is a woman. And then yeah. it's funny, I showed it to my friend, my friend's like, that's a guy. And I look at it, I was like, no, it's not. He's like, no, 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 look, there's I just pecs. There's a chest there. It's a, a well-defined chest. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> But uh, actually, I really like the Hyrule of it. I liked how you just like kind of bounce cards like mm -hmm. this, and it's just, just super fun. So that that was that. But uh, but honestly, I'm not a Gold's main. I play Pale Moon as my main, as my other main, and I would say Bermuda Triangle is starting to get up there. I have a lot of knowledge of Bermuda Triangle, but I actually prefer Bermuda Triangle as kind of more my casual stuff. And I consider Grant Blue and my Pale Moon as my more competitive, uh, like I'm actually building for something type of decks. So, uh, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's kind of where where I'm at with it. But Runa's fun and all, but I, I, I there's a, especially in V, I feel like there's a lot of weaknesses, like retire, adapt to retire, and I don't know. There's like certain things that you can you can go around with Bermuda, just people, you know, meta changes. So I'm not, that's why I don't like Bermuda. Whereas both doll, both Nightmare dolls, which is in Pale Moon, I play, and Grand mm -hmm. Blue, I feel like they always have kind of a really open toolbox. So even when meta does shift, I can shift my decks with it. Where mm -hmm. I feel like in other other clans, it's not as easy. Like yeah. Some decks are, some decks are, but Bermuda isn't one of them. So I don't, I don't like that about yeah. Bermuda. So that's why it's more of my casual, I experiment with this and have a lot of fun and look at my little cute girls. And then I'm like, oh, but back to my zombies, my boys, my homies, <laughs> my greed shades. Yep. So. Yeah, like, I I mean, I don't know so much about Pale Moon, but Grand Blue, definitely, you, the more tools that they come out with, the easier it is to shift and adapt. Oh, yeah. Because it, it is 
sufficiently flexible to adapt to different metas. But the Bermuda builds are like, these are the cards you are playing together <laughs> for, <laughs> for yeah. your skills. You're the, we have oppressive skills, but you don't get to choose how you're building it. Yep. Right? So. There is, uh, I will admit, Twinkle Melody, which is uh, one of the more recent sets, has some of the most interesting deck designs. In Agreed. Terms of card structure. Yeah. They've got some cool decks. It just sucks that you can't use them too well, but there are some, like, just fun interactions like with order cards and healing and all these weird things like uh having the same card names and you restand off of them like there's some really cool stuff in there it's just unfortunate that like half the stuff is like kind of irrelevant now kind of mm -hmm. usable especially yeah. with overdress coming out yeah and bermuda tax keeps me away i was, was really very early in my like i'm talking like original original vanguard mm. ott was my first clan and then i was like i'm gonna make bermuda as my next clan <laughs> i was like oh. even back then it's like 2011 2012 i was like i can't afford this mm -hmm. dang that's so interesting because it's pretty cheap now like oh. everything dropped <laughs> vanguard did not used to be cheap I heard, no, no, I heard no, rumors no. about it being very expensive back in the day. Yeah. Well, especially, and yeah. the Bermuda cards were the most expensive mm -hmm. of, of anything. But so. you only got one wave of support a year, so yeah. Yeah. it's an investment. If you that was your only clan, that was fine. Quote, unquote, fine, I guess, what you would mm -hmm. say. But um, I, like, I love the idea behind Mirror, and I love the Highlander build. I was so close to pulling the trigger on the Highlander build. But then I looked at the grade fours, and Nezka was like, uh, at the time, she was like $70. And then that was the only one I remember. But the other grade four that you needed as well was like 70 four. to 50 Yeah. It, was like, it, it used was like, to be cheap. Uh, I know, and I wish but I picked I it up back then. I, I think, don't know. Because I, I actually like, picked up. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just like, you guys make me laugh because it's like my one of my key stories is how I bought Amnesty Messiahs at $75 a piece and I needed Jeez. four of them. Oh my goodness. And then like the next set they got reprinted as promos, yes. like box top of promos. That's pain. That's a, uh, someone, one of my close friends recently bought some strides and then the reprint collection got revealed and they're like, <laughs> you know, if you know, but the Bermuda strides were starting to go up. I think it's mainly because of buyouts. Uh, they weren't mm. that expensive a while back, but so he bought out literally all the strides he needed, like all all the all the ones that I gave reprinted, literally every single one. <laughs> and then he spent like literally three hundred dollars on it. Literally a month later, out it comes, revival collection showing all the strides that he just bought. And he was like, "What? Why?" Ah, <laughs> uh, we've all been there. Yeah. All right. So we covered that you have a Twitch channel and YouTube. What what kind of content are you making on your YouTube? How YouTube. Would you describe it? Um, how would I describe it? <laughs> so people call say me call me like an energetic YouTube content creator. So all my stuff's like energetic, but um, and very wholesome and positive. Mm -hmm. But I would say my content revolves around pretty much like like what's going on. So like like overdress obviously V premium and premium pretty much like for example like i have a video where bcfo is right around the corner so i'm like hey guys bcfo is right around the corner <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what we can do like here's how you sign up here's how you play here's what i'm thinking about mm. taking but i won't say exactly what all that stuff but then i also have like my deck profiles like i have a zorka uh list for set two and then i also go over sometimes i go over meta like i like to touch on like lyrical uh which is the overdress meta going on i could touch on that I'm, I'm kind of all over the place to be honest with you i've done like the producer letter stuff um i'm planning mm -hmm. on doing like a, a kahoot thing for my 1k with my community just because we want to <laughs> we want to I, I literally i rent so fun fact though People, the people don't know, and I'm not going to go too far into it, but pretty much I, I randomly got a silver signature card. I, I ordered a different card, and they gave me the silver signature instead. Dang. So, And I didn't really realize this until like I looked at it, and I was like, oh, this is like a $200 card. So I decided I'm going to throw it back at the community. So I'm going to be doing this this thing where I have 10 participants, uh, some of which will be content creators, and someone's going to win it. Um, and there's going to be some twists and stuff, but that, that that's also going to be content on my Twitch channel. I mean, not on my Twitch, on my YouTube. I don't know. I'm going to play. Sometimes I do random stuff. Like I did a Pacifica restanding deck that was Blade Master, jokingly. Um, and that was like a <laughs> three minute video of me just going, look, I, I restand. So <laughs> I just do random stuff all over the place. So I'm pretty much everywhere. I just do anything card fight related I do. I do some like gaming content too, but it's not like 
my my main stuff obviously mm-hmm. i just if i'm playing genshin sometimes i'll uh, i'll release the vods or something like that mm-hmm. also oh i do versus matches i do my mm-hmm. i actually recently started getting popularity i do um remote fights with my with my people on my on my uh on my twitch and then i'll clip those and then i'll actually put them on youtube and that those are actually commonly like a weekly thing i'll usually do like two or three depending on how what, what's going on in the content world Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the thing too. A lot of people like watching those because it's literal physical cards being played, and it's it's a nice chill environment where it's just me and the other person, music playing. There's no like background noise or any of that. And I notice that a lot of people tend to tend to like that stuff too. Yeah, so, yeah. it's very chill. Well, I know I've seen you play on Tabletop Simulator. Is that how you primarily do your remote fights? Uh, no, I actually usually do it camera to camera. So uh, okay, cool. recently I've been doing TTS because I wanted to try V Quick Collection and I didn't have the proxies. And we had some mm. people in the Discord that were like, oh, I love TTS. And they've been TTSing a lot in my Discord. So I was like, let's do a TTS, uh, TTS stream this time. So that's how the Grand Blue TTS streams kind of came out from that. Mm-hmm. I tried to sack with uh, Shop Noir. And I won one game. I literally went through, no joke, 80% of my deck and only saw three triggers somehow. And then the other game, I went the opposite route where I just kept hitting triggers. <laughs> and well i mean that's vanguard isn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> true all right so why is v premium your favorite out of the the three formats uh what so it it's exciting for you <laughs> so it's kind of like my baby like i started with it you know it's like my baby but also in terms of like competitive knowledge i'm pretty competitive but if you were to ask me like what can i tell you most about it'll be v premium i can't i, I don't premium is a little too wide for me i can only talk about certain clans and overdress is fun but it's not quite there yet i can talk mm-hmm. about the cards and talk about the meta but it's not as entertaining but if you start me on a v premium topic i can tell you about every meta that's happened all the decks all the cards how they work what to play how to counteract certain things how to play against certain stuff how to deal with matchups all that stuff i can give you like a, a full a full i can say it for hours and tell you about all this stuff there's a couple small stuff i don't know like mainly like tachikazi and like mega Kani because i don't play them as much but even within those i can tell you how to fight them and you know talk about what to do and how to face them and like i don't know it's the, it's the four i've been most successful with so far uh though my zorga stuff has been has been doing pretty well too but that's overdress that's overdress over trigger doing over trigger stuff mm, mm, <laughs> i see yeah. my yellows and i win my games uh, whereas <laughs> in premium, it's a little bit more <laughs> it's true zorga you you hit your crits so you're having a good time <laughs> oh i have i have a question uh do you remember the the card fight con back in the day you know uh vibe boys that that era uh, oh yeah of course you played zorga right yeah. Set one. How how did you do on that? I don't remember. I did so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I got sacked so hard. Uh, Me and uh, Cardweeb, which is Charlie, Charlie. you guys don't know, and Vision talk about this game all the time. Uh. I, I faced game one with TIE Fighter, and he was playing Bruce. And it was mm. pretty much just whoever gets their win con first, and he didn't get to his 15 soul in time. So uh, oh, he's he playing Barrow. Game, but it was, yeah, but it was still, still a really fun match. It was very neck and neck. We were mm-hmm. like... I go and now you go and now I go and now yep. you go and eventually it was just uh, he he didn't get to his 15 solo time. I think if he did, he would have won. And then game two, game two was that Charlie? I think that was Charlie, where I just got completely obliterated. He like he literally turn one lands a front and he had a grade one of them. Oh, that's just the Discord. Oh, okay. Is think, he still moving? Is it? Oh, thank God. No, I lost okay, internet for back. a second. <laughs> okay, we're back. Oh, so game I... two, he crits me. Puts me to four, and I'm like, cool. Game three, he fronts and over triggers me, if I'm not mistaken, if that was correctly. So I just died. Like, I literally just never had the chance. To... I didn't even hit my grade three. I... He literally killed me before I rode. Oh, that's Charlie. So he, he absolutely hit it, hit the front. Or not the front, the, uh, the over trigger. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, I don't even remember if he hit the over trigger or not. I just know he literally hit a trigger every single check. And I just remember being like, well, I'm dead. And then game three, I faced Prison. And if you guys don't know the meta too well, Prison against Zorga in set one is actually pretty hard to deal with at the it's time. Rough. So I just, uh, I just died. Yep. I, 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 at that point, I was just kind of like, you know what? I think I just want to root for, for Mr. Time Weep. <laughs> I, I think I'm good. I think I'm done being, being trigger attack today. <laughs> you, you were his biggest fan. You were cheering him on the attack time. It was so I, funny. Because like I, I don't know, I can't I can't explain it. Like to this day, him and I talk about this, and I still can't explain it. There was something in me that was like, be, this was like still you know like in the rounds. I was like, I have this feeling that Eric's gonna take it all the way. Like there's something that was just telling me he's like, oh, he's, he's going all the way. Like there's nothing stopping this man. That's exactly what it happened. She kept saying it too. <laughs> because it, I just 
just knew it, and that's exactly what happened. He won the whole event. He took it all, all yeah. the way to the end. It was good. It was good. All right. What's the next question? All right. What do you like the most about Vanguard? Ooh. Ooh. We've already said you like the community. You like the art. What about the gameplay keeps you coming back? So there's just like this like feeling that you get when you play your deck and you know you don't G-assist. And you have those games <laughs> where it's like neck and neck. It's like drive check to drive check, rear guard shield value to rear guard shield value. Those games where it's like it's like the most biggest like aroma, like it, like feeling of like, oh, this is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. It's all down to this one thing, you know. Like I remember one time, a long time ago, I faced him. It was I was playing Ezel, and the opponent was playing Himiko uh, with with V Premium. And this game was so close. Like, I'm over here spamming my, my markers, and he's over here just constantly soul-charging his crits and putting them on the vanguard and making making Himiko just, like, insanely high pressure. Mm -hmm. And we was just so close. To, like, we were... I had, like, seven or eight Excel markers at this point, and we were at five damage, and we just kept going back and forth. And that win... when I did win that game. That win was one of the greatest wins of my life. Like, him and I were both like, you know what? I don't even care that I lost. That was the best game I've had in vanguard mm -hmm. all year. Like, it, it, it's those moments that bring me back. Those moments of those neck and neck experiences those those hot sweaty experiences of getting yeah. the game and it's just having so much fun with it I, I can't i can't i can't explain it it's just it's just there's no other feeling that i've had like it except for like maybe like a board game here and there but you don't yeah. i don't get it i don't get it with other cards the way i do with like vanguard like those drive checks it's hard to, i can't i hate to say it because sometimes getting drive checked sack sucks but when you hit those drive checks and and you, your person two to passes and you will put it all down and then you get all your drive checks and you put your four crit on your vanguard and you just kill them something about those experiences even though it's like a bad side they also feel really great you're like yep took that w or even on the close ones i took that w like i don't know just just keep coming keep going it's just really fun yeah. and uh, learning from the game is just really fun and even though there are some rng elements there's still ways to just like get better at the game and that's just super super enjoyable to me yeah mm -hmm. Well, and you can get to, when you're better at the game, you get to the point where the RNG is, like, the most exciting. Right? Yeah. Because you've, you've yep. got your opponent cornered. Like, is is this flip of the card going to get me what I want? Or nope. Nope, that top deck. Cool? Yeah. Trigger, <laughs> triggers are the best and the absolute worst part of this game. Yep. yep. It's well, a lovely no, when, you, when you lose, they're the worst part. When you win, they're the most fantastic. <laughs> exactly. It's, so it's I mean, both. That was like my, my game a week and a half ago like if i had put my tri i had triple drive and if i had put all three triggers on my vanguard i would have won the game and i was like i'm i'm gonna wimp out and i'm not I, i'm gonna put the triggers up in the rear guard and that was that was it i didn't lose and then my opponent had twin drive he got two triggers put them both on the vanguard and killed me wow but, right that's that's fun <laughs> i don't mind losing when it's that kind of like fun excitement mm. like that all right what do you do to keep up with all of the information that's coming out about vanguard what's your strategy for that my strategy so uh one of the ways before i i guess i'll say this before i open up a discord one of the ways was honestly different fight streams because he streams on tuesdays and he does all mm -hmm. that so it's just really easy easy to follow uh that was my main thing uh, before i was really into content i would literally just watch stuff on youtube between solemn uh vanguard insider which is eric and uh different fight between the three of them i would just keep up my knowledge that way or you know i'd look at discords and stuff see what people are talking about see what's currently basically being discussed because nowadays i don't even have to like look at anything people just come to me mm -hmm. <laughs> people be yeah, like yeah we're kind of orange. in the same place now <laughs> yeah <laughs> the orange 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 grab blue grab blue zarga zarga this that like mm -hmm. i get so many th 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 uh, comments now which is good which is good i don't have to i don't have to look too far now to, to see all this stuff come in my face and also in my discord we have like our own stream summary now and all this stuff so i just kind of see it out in the open but for people that aren't as into it i think youtube um and the twitter like the, now that they have an english twitter which wasn't as uh, apparent before mm -hmm. but now the twitter translates as well so there's the english car fight twitter so you can literally just follow that and get all your updates that way as well which i think is super convenient um and yeah obviously youtube your favorite content creators is also a nice way that's probably the main the main i, I think different is a big part of it because i just um there's just so many people i know that also watch him so we all we're all just kind of like oh oh what, what what's going on oh is it twitch is it easy live you know so mm -hmm. it's just easy easy to get to him and he, yeah he's so good because like the great thing about him is he's really good at communicating mm -hmm. and 
speaks Japanese. Right? Yep. <laughs> you know, you can, like, it's a good combo. Easily just like listen and translate and and like even give an interpretation as yep. he's listening to the Japanese and he gives the interpretation in English. I as somebody who has done like I've never done interpretation because that is not in my skill set, but even just doing translation, it is not easy. Oh, I, I agree. I'm bilingual. Well, I'm technically trilingual, but I'm uh, so I know. Uh, between my, just my mother, my mother will, you know, be like grandma will be like saying something in Russian. I'm here translating over in English, and the English person speaks and translates <laughs> over back in Russian. And back and forth thing. I used to, when I was a kid, I used to take my grandma to the doctor a lot. And that was just, I would always be the translator between the two of them. So uh, mm -hmm. you, I'm used to it. So that's why I props to, props to Chris for that because, yeah, it, it's not easy, especially, you know, he's got the chat rolling and everything. And mm -hmm. he's trying to listen to, to what's going on in Japanese and then translating it. He's got the voice for it too. He has a very, like, nice mm -hmm. voice they can listen to to when like listen to the important like important parts like grab what you need and kind of and kind of do what you got to do with yep. it. yep yep all right cole do you have any other questions um i don't think so we've been going for too long <laughs> a good while <laughs> it's yeah. a long one <laughs> yeah all right let me take us through the closing uh Number one, please review our podcast on whichever service that you're using to listen to it. We greatly appreciate that. Thanks to Zach Boydis for our intro and outro music. And remember, once again, I will be going to San Antonio for a Zach Boydis show. So if you're interested, hit me up. Get We can uh, we can talk about getting you in to the Zach Boydis show. Or Broken Color, the name of his band. You can visit our website, drivecheck.net. Uh, where we have links to news, YouTube videos, uh, our deck builder, which uh, has every card for all of it. Have, are all the new sets in there, Cole? Yeah, uh, yes, actually. Uh, GC Grain worked his butt off, and he got everything dude, uh, up to that's set three. Hardest working unpaid dude in all of Brussels. I know. Um, I think that's where he is. I don't. <laughs> uh, Europe for sure. Europe in there. Yeah, I don't know. in all of the European Union. Yeah. Uh, I hope he's see this is that's why like that's why socialism's good. Like he gets to enjoy his life. Right? I'm into it. I'm into the g give me some of that European socialism. Mm, delicious. Yeah. Uh yeah, so he, he uh, did since we're not in European socialism and we are based in the United States. Please contribute to our Patreon, patreon.com slash drive check one word. <laughs> Although honestly, a reminder we primarily just take the Patreon money and buy presents for our patrons and send them out to you guys. So speaking are of we doing that soon, Cole, do we yeah. have something to send out to the kids? Yeah, I've already started. Um, so I got custom drive check sleeves uh, made. So uh, everyone who is a five dollar patron starting in October or is an existing patron who wants to bump up to five dollars will get shipped a set of five sleeves. And I'm sorry, it's only five. This car, uh, the things were expensive, and uh, it it would be a lot to ship them. Uh, so we're ride only deck. getting five right now. Ride yeah, deck. just for your ride deck, that's perfect. Exactly or for that, your yep. um for your shadow army tokens. Correct. That's that was the main. That was the main. But um, <laughs> yeah, if you want to become a a new patron, uh, go ahead and do that. So the five dollar or more tier, I should say, the five dollar or more tiers, um. In November, if you join in October, in November I will ship those out to you. But if you're already an existing member at five or greater, then I will ship those out in October. So, all right. Once again, Patreon.com/slash Drive Check, all one word. Uh, and we do stream Twitch.tv/slash Drive underscore Check Tuesday nights at 8:30 Eastern, 7:30 Central. Uh, you can watch us record the program live. Um, and we also do stream other stuff. Now that my desk is in the new location, I can set up my actual streaming computer and I can start streaming more. We'll see how that works out. Uh, TikTok, Drive Check Podcast, although I don't think Cole's throwing stuff up on there as much as he used to. No time. And if you would like to send us an email, once again, we know you're listening out there. So send us an email just to say, hey, I listen in this location. We'd love to hear from you. Drivecheckpodcast at gmail.com. And then on Twitter, we have at drive underscore check for the program, at wash in the sink for me, Cole. I am at Cole underscore McCune, C-O-L-E underscore M-C-C-U-N-E. 
<clears throat> and um, starting Saturday, uh, Perfect Guard Podcast will be moved to its own uh, feed. So it'll no longer be doubled up on the drive check. Uh, all the old episodes, I will move over to that. Uh, and I will I'll keep them in drive check still. Uh, and I'll make a little mini announcement to, to let people know that it, we've moved. Uh, but that's all going to happen and uh, with episode 10 coming out Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'll make a tweet and all that stuff later on. So just stay tuned. All right. Outer Orange, your Twitter? At Outer underscore Orange. We do a lot of silly stuff on there. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> it almost sounded like right, your intro. Cole, you got to close us out. Yeah, uh, I goofed, and I forgot to grab a card, so give me just, like, two seconds. Oh, dang. I I thought Alan was going to come in, and he usually yeah. grabs that for me. And I only had enough time to do uh, one thing. I did get the text message that he slept through it because he's not feeling well. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I just saw that, too. But here we go. All right. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Drive Check Podcast. The demon descends upon a world without deities. Laws no longer exist. That's evil god pontiff Castile Dionis. <laughs> what does he do? Oh, wait. We already talked about him. We did. All we right. did. Yeah. That's why I picked him because that's, the last, that's the last time we talk about him. He gone. <laughs> I, yeah, he is. Well, he'll, still, he'll always be an old card. I just I wanted it to be like Glendios. Well, then you could have picked it. That's true. <laughs> I just think I think everything should be about Glendios until we actually get Glendios. I yeah, when I want to do like something special when Glendios actually comes out, I have a reverse special. That would be kind of interesting because I'm assuming he's coming to to uh, to to V in the next. If we're getting reverse units in V. We're getting Glendios. You can't. Have I know, right? Noodle soup without the noodles. Right. Yeah. So, so 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 that'll be interesting. All right. All right, I'm going to stop recording now. <sighs>